Hello everyone, my name is Jim Lewis. I'm the founder of Model Train Technology. We're a new company and we're focused on lighting and animation and sound. And today is a virtual workshop where we're going to be highlighting two groups of products that we make. One is light boards for passenger cars and cabooses, and we'll show you how we, how we do that. And then the second section is our lighting controllers for buildings and uh, the layout. And included in that are our new fiber optic controlling uh, control lighting systems. As well, we'll show you some new products at the end, including our multicolored uh, block signals that are lit and controlled by fiber optic lighting. It makes everything a whole lot easier. Uh, we, this is going to be a, a whirlwind that takes about 40 minutes for the two sections, and then uh, we'd be happy to, to hear from you. Uh, if you'd like to reach us directly, my email is jim at modeltrainman.com or model, jim at modeltraintechnology.com. Both will get you to, this, to me. And our website is modeltraintechnology.com. Uh, if you forget all of that, you can go to your browser tomorrow morning or whatever and type model train lighting and animation. And pretty sure you're going to see us listed in the top four or five companies on Google. So that's a really easy way. You don't even have to write anything down. Uh, really appreciate hearing from you. And uh, we're excited to share with you uh, what we've invented over the last 18 months. Thanks for watching. Okay, for the first part of this presentation, we're going to be talking about light boards to light passenger cars and cabooses. And uh, this is where it all started. Uh, I had an N-scale uh, Amtrak. This is made, these two are made by Kato. And I wanted to light this car. I had a whole train, 11, 11 passenger cars, and there was no lights in them. I mean, Kato has some cheap single LED and plastic light pipes, but they don't work very well. So I took the car apart and I bought a Digitrax four function decoder, hacked out the seats, uh, put a, some LEDs in there, and I, I got it to work, but it was a lot of work and it destroyed the inside of the car. So I said to myself, there must be, somebody must have designed and built a board that will slip, uh, slip right inside there. And uh, well, you know the story, there wasn't. So uh, this is now the 12th generation of the LED light board. This has a full DCC compliant uh, decoder on it. It look, works like an engine decoder called a multifunction decoder. Uh, this one has, <clears throat> excuse me, all of the banks of capacitors, which you've now been able to add on. We, this is a new technology. Uh, these tantalum capacitors are very small and compact and very efficient. Um, and there's some other features on the board that we'll go through in just a minute. Uh, but that fits perfectly inside the roof and inside the plastic tabs, actually it would go that way, inside the Kato car. And of course the Kato have wheel pickups on both trucks. So this works great. And uh, usually for the Kato, we recommend that you use uh, one bank, one extra bank of capacitors. So you can buy the board with one capacitor, four capacitors, or seven capacitors. And if you're gonna use our brass pickups, which we'll talk about in just a minute, uh, we suggest you put all the capacitors on there and, uh, and, and go that way. Uh, the board, all of the LEDs are mounted on the board. You can't cut this, it's just one piece. Uh, if you have a smaller, uh, some of the European cars require a shorter board. We have a shorter version of that. Uh, this is 124 millimeters, this is 144. And, uh, and all of these LEDs come in four colors. So when you order the board, you can choose uh, 2000K, which is a kind of yellowish candle color. We use that often for the cabooses, uh, 3000K, 5000, and 6500. And the difference is 5000 and the 6500K uh, tend to be a much brighter sort of fluorescent uh, bluish color. Uh, this car has the 3000 in it. And I'm gonna turn on the lights over here and the functions uh, of this, you can adjust the brightness remotely. I'm using a Digitrack system today. Uh, there are two circuits on the board, one for the main LED, uh, lights in the board, and then an auxiliary pad so you can attach uh, LEDs and uh, marker lights. Now, what we usually do is we take a pre-wired uh, 0402 LED and dip it in something called gallery glass. It dries crystal clear. It's a little bit soft, but it works perfectly in terms of inserting it back inside the car. 
And the beauty is, is as you use it as a kind of glue, uh, it is removable. So if you make a mistake or you need to make a change or uh, if the LED burns out, which is pretty rare, but uh, if you had to do that, you can change it. So we don't recommend you use uh, super glue or, or anything like that, all right? Now, that works great if you have a Kato car, but if you have another brand that doesn't have the wheel pickups and some of the other cars did, then what do you do? So I'm gonna use this HO board uh, car and I'm gonna show you exactly what we did. We, um, we have something called uh, brass, floating brass. And what we do is, we, I, so I wanted to be designing circuit boards. I didn't wanna be spending time uh, figuring out this, this brass strip capability. Uh, but I tried everything and it didn't really work. And so we came up with this idea that if you soldered a piece of wire to a brass strip and then slid it underneath the, the axles, just like this, and then just wrapped it around the axles, it produced or, or it, uh, it caused a lot of surface area contact between the axle and the brass, which is good. And also, kind of by trial and error, we discovered that by not gluing it and fastening it to the truck um, and let it float, it avoided one of the key problems of all of those systems is pinching the axles. And that, of course, creates a lot of friction on the car, and that's bad. So this has worked really well for us, and uh, it's easy to install. Uh, we get these brass strips. We have them custom etched in Scotland, and this is what it looks like when it comes to you, and you can just use regular pair of scissors uh, to cut it up and stick it in here. This is the end size. There are seven strips. And on the HO, it's two millimeters wide, so there are five strips on there. I think these are five dollars. So we, you know, we're not trying to make money on this; just make it available to you. And uh, so let's take the car apart. I left this loose, as you saw. And inside, this is our HO board. And this has you can order up to twelve so the super caps. Uh, on the HO boards, we have a switching power supply. Now, uh, what that means is that the current coming from the tracks is about 14, just under 14 volts, typically. The LEDs and the CPU on here for the decoder only need 5 volts. So the difference has to go somewhere, and typically that goes in the form of heat. Well, we didn't want any heat in the board, and we didn't want to use extra current from the tracks that takes away from the engine to light the cars. So the, what the switching power supply does is... is uses a high frequency switching mechanism to only use as much current as the circuit board needs. So if you have a normally set LED brightness, uh, very, very little current comes uh, and is drawn in for the track. So that really helps quite a lot. Uh, other things that we did on the board is there's a blue light on here that you can disable. There's a little solder pad. So when we're assembling this and we wanna make sure that the board contact with the track and everything is working, when we put it on the track, you can see that there's a blue light. So once we've got the install working and everything, then we can disable that and put the top on. Likewise, there's an LED in the back, for a red light, uh, to connect for the, uh, the rears just to make sure that's working. And we use double stick tape to fasten it in. All right. Uh, the last thing that we did, uh, which is a fairly new um, part is I was taking these apart and I forgot, you know, I'm doing installations for customers and I would forget the address. And so I'd have to disconnect and put the programming track together and so forth. Um, and if anything else happened, if you had to reset the board, typically you have to take the whole thing apart. Well, now what we have is on all of the boards, there's a solid state uh, magnetic sensor, uh, no moving parts. And so when you use this little uh, refrigerator magnet, uh, just wave it over the end of the car, then the board will reset and back to the default uh, address three and the standard brightness. So that's uh, that works really well. And uh, let's turn this on. Let's switch to loco three, and this is instant on and instant off. And then you can see that it can fade, and we can adjust the brightness. So there you go. So let me show you the uh, the other thing. Uh, here's an end scale example of the. Uh, floating brass on, on end scale, you see it's very small. Uh, we tend to like to put the, the wire, I'm gonna use this as a, as a pointer, right here through the base of the wire. So that uh, keeps it out of the way of the, the coupler. And uh, a couple of people have asked me, can you put it inside, you know, drill a hole through here? 
Uh, we don't recommend that for two reasons. You can see that you can't see the wire here because it's going up into the body. So there's no wire hanging down and, and uh, running the potential of catching something on the track. So uh, what the wire does goes through here and right inside the body and up through the body of the car. And you can see that in this example. Uh, one other, another feature, uh, having done a lot of installs, is at the beginning, both uh, the DCC connections were at one end of the board. Well, that's great for Kato because the pickups are at one end. However, in this car where we're gonna use our brass, floating brass, um, what we wanted to do is just have a contact at the other end. So the wires can be neatly tucked in and they don't have to run through the car. So a lot of little subtleties that we learned, uh, customer experience and our own uh, experience installing the light boards. Okay. So let's see. So now, uh, so let's talk about, let's take this off the track and just get it out of the way over here. Um, and uh, so that's the, that's the standard board. We have, like I said, the two sizes. I'm going to take these off the track. And what we did then is went and designed a caboose board. And of course, the caboose has no pickups. They never have pickups. So we used our floating brass and put that in. And the first board that we made, this is actually one of the samples, uh, it worked okay, but because the car is so light, particularly an end scale, um, and it was not designed for the pickups, it was intermittent. The, the light was intermittent. It just didn't stay on long enough. So uh, we fiddled with that a little bit. We redesigned the board and we added a special, what we call super cap board. And these can be piggybacked underneath the the main caboose board. In fact, you could have more than one if you like. And that really does an incredible job of keeping the lights on. So that works out fantastically well. And I'm going to sh show you how well by putting this car on the track. And let's see, get the, the right loco here going. Oh, I don't have it on the wheels. There we go. There we go, okay. So you can see, oops, I just bounced it off the track. There we go, all right. So what I'm gonna do is pick up one end of the, the car here and you're gonna see, get that right there, there we go. Let's see, get rid of that. Okay, so we got the, okay, there we go. So when I pick up the wheels off the car, the lights stay on for three or four seconds. I'm gonna pick it all the way up, put it back down on the track, pick it up. So you can see if it was going over a frog, it'd do a great job and pulled behind a freight train, uh, terrific. So this is, interestingly enough, nobody had put together a combination of parts to light cabooses. So we have an N scale and HO caboose kit and uh, no caboose would be complete without a lantern. Well, we couldn't find lanterns that we could just resell. And as we'll talk about a little bit later, we got into the 3D business. So now we have a th an HO size a lantern. You can get warm white or red for the LED. And there's a little tiny LED that we put in there and we use some more of our gallery glass. And that can be fastened on and, and attached to the auxiliary pads on the caboose board. Now that's the HO one. For N scale, we had to do something different. Here is the uh, N scale. Actually, let me put, show you the, the car here. So here's the carcass that goes on here. You can see right at the end, at the back, there is a lantern. And inside the car, we have a fiber optic cable. It's about an inch, a little over an inch long, and a dongle, which has the LED inside of it. So that bit looks like this. And I have this connected up to one of our controllers just so you can see it. And you can see that the red light, I can turn it on and off there. And that just goes right inside the end scale uh, caboose. So pretty cool. All right. Um, so that's that's the, uh, the caboose side of things. And now uh, we'll go into one more thing on the HO. So here are the two HO boards. Uh, this is a double row board. Oh, I didn't mention on N-Scale. So most, almost all the light boards have a row, a center row of LEDs, whether you're battery powered or some other kind. And, and most of our boards that we sell, you know, the center ones are just fine. But for the sleepers, 
there's a hallway and then there's the, the rooms for the cars and uh, the sleepers. And so we have a dual row board available in, a, in N scale, but we also have it in HO. Now, what we found is that from customer feedback, customers saw this double row board and said, well, that's great. I can use that and hook that up to my DCC system. And I can use that to light my backdrops and my scenery. So can you give me some different ways to connect this up, not just DCC? So this board has a number of different features. We didn't need to put all the capacitors on because we're not gonna put it on the track. There's a little push button here. And if I push it once, the light will come on and we can push this again to adjust the brightness. There's no mechanical switch here. So this is all done by the circuitry and the push button. And when I get it to what I want, I just push once and it will blink and that will save the setting. Uh, you can also uh, turn on the rear LED light and uh, you can have that blink as well. So that's just, that will means that the board will work on DC as well as DCC. And of course, all of the other boards will as well. Uh, the last thing that we have in the works for product release over the next 60 days is a remote control infrared sensor on here where you can remote control this. So one of the things we found is that when people are operating their trains, they might have two trains running, to then try to, try to switch back and forth to turn the cabin lights on on the cars uh, got to be a little problematic. They said, look, I'm just gonna turn it on and off occasionally. Uh, can you give me a non-DCC way to do that? So that's definitely coming. And then if any of you have spent time on our website, you may have noticed that we have an, uh, quite a number of dome cars, both in HO and N scale. And so this is the bo only board we make which does not have a decoder on it. It just has a series of LEDs. And this can be cut at different lengths. There's connectors on either end. These wires can be connected to the main boards and turned on and off in parallel with the mains, or it can be connected with the auxiliary and turned off separately. So we do that on the dome board where there's not an end of car red light, we'll use the, the same uh, circuit to turn on and off the dome lights. And this could be uh, two or three lights, or it could be the whole dome uh, board. Uh, we also found a couple of customers said, well, this is great. Uh, this is inexpensive. It's, it's, I like the way this is set up. And I can fasten this inside my buildings uh, to provide lighting. And we're going to talk about building lighting in the next section. Uh, but this is a dual row, uh, dual purpose, uh, both for dome car lighting and for uh, building lighting. So we have a very complete selection of lighting boards. Uh, I mentioned all in different colors, different capacitor types. And with the floating brass, there's no reason not to light your cars.